Now, the Super Eagles moved from 42nd in the world to 28th in the latest FIFA rankings and have seen them record their best leaps since 2013. Nigeria moved 14 places in the world and are now third in Africa, moving three places from their previous sixth position. This is Super Eagles' highest tally since May 2013 when the Eagles were ranked 28th in the world. A few days after winning the AFCON in 2013, they were ranked 30th before moving up two places in May. Although they did not win the AFCON 2023 like they did in 2018, Nigeria's latest rise is not unconnected to their performance at the tournament in Ivory Coast where they settled for silver no thanks to a 2-1 defeat against the host in the final. But based on their 2023 AFCON performances as well, bronze medalist South Africa rose to eight slots to 50, from 8 slots to 58, while Kutira Guinea got boosted by 9 points to 74th, while Angola moved from 24th places to 94th to 118th. Well, after recording um, a heroic performance there at the African Cup of Nations, we are being joined live from Turkey by Super Eagles assistant captain Kenneth Meru. Well, thank you, Kenneth, for joining us on the show. Well, I'll call you MON, the latest member of the Order of the Ninja. Thank you for joining us on the show. How do you feel about this, Kenneth? We knew that the team, when they said the first game, they had a one all draw, and so many Nigerians did not believe they would go all the way to the finals. But how do you feel about this? Qualifiers for the World Cup, it was a struggle for us. But, you know, we, we just kept going. And I'm I'm really happy that we could get to the final. Unfortunately, we didn't win it, but uh, it wasn't a bad outing for us. I was talking about not being a bad outing for the team, Kenneth. I'm looking at your career, first of all. For the senior national team, you've won the gold medal, you have the silver medal, and you have the bronze medal. Well, how does that make you feel as a footballer, knowing you're an Abuja boy, um, so many players will be wanting to grow to this level, but how does that make you feel when you look back at how you started football? Um, I feel proud of what I've achieved. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. A lot of people will not take what I've taken. <laughs> you know um playing for the national team and it takes a lot of endurance a lot of hard work uh, a lot of respect you know there are issues where you know some things happen that would make you be like you know what i, I give up i'll just play for my for my um, club side but you know i've been i've been patient i've been working hard and and every manager that has come that has always, you know, had faith in me. And this is this is important for me. And I feel really proud to have achieved this, you know. And um, yeah, I hope uh, one day I'll show my kids and grandkids um, the trophies, you know. Well, talking about these trophies as well, can okay, let's look at the Super Eagles team now. Um, there's been a lot of, well, leading onto this tournament, there's some injuries and all, but. I don't know, the coach managed to lead the team to um, the finals. Now, how would you talk about the chemistry, the balance in the team? Because it seems that even during the celebrations, we saw when uh, Stanley Warbally won the man of the match, the whole team ran towards him. Yeah, um, at first for Stanley, it was strange, you know, but I really, I am proud of how he has um, come into the team and has handled himself because it's, it's um, difficult when you come into a team that were already used to one goalkeeper for a while and you're just coming in and, you know, it's uh, he handled it properly, you know, he's confident on goal as well. I think he proved himself from training and from the friendly games that, you know, he has what it takes to be to be the, the number one, to lead us uh, in the in the after. You know, and I will say kudos to him. And for the team, um, a lot of us, we've been playing with each other a long time. And that's just the thing with the uh, Super Eagles. We are unified. No matter what is going on out there, we believe in our quality. We know and we say to ourselves that we're good. We're better than this. So we have to go all out to give everything, you know. And we try to also, myself and Ahmed Musa, to also tell them, listen, if you win this tournament, a lot of things so a lot of things will happen for you and for the country as well. Because I remember in 2013 when we arrived in the stadium, 
it was packed uh, in the airport it was packed um it the streets were full with people running after the bus and i really wanted to experience this again unfortunately we didn't but you know there is next year well, okay, there's so many are still thrilling from your penalty. Um, so many say, how did Kenya do this? I think it's going to be on the list of so many Nigerians for quite a while. Um, we know this is penalty and pr probably we will not count as a goal. Yes. But for the AFCON, we saw you in 2019 get a goal for Nigeria. How, on a scale of 1 to 10, how calm, how confident were you that you get that penalty? Um, nine. <laughs> I was confident because uh, for me it counts. I don't know if it, if they don't penalties people who lose and all. And for me to play the same penalty um, to the same goalkeeper several times and they don't they don't catch they don't save it. It means I I scored. Well, um, Kelly, we're still talking on this. Um, for Nigerians, I know that there's some level of criticism after the final loss. But coming back to Nigeria, we saw the massive welcome from, uh, so many say the social media, they are social media warriors who are keypad warriors as well. But talk about the love you felt immediately landed into the Nigerian airport. Yeah, for me, I've always um, said to some of my colleagues, listen, the people on social media, um, there are people who are there because they are angry at you because they lost their bets. And there are people like like who I used to be, who I didn't have social media. I was just supporting the team for the love of the team, you know. And these are the people you meet when you come back to Nigeria, when you see it on the streets, people who come all the way to Ivory Coast to support us. So most people on social media just, some don't even watch the game. They just put their bet and want you to win. For example, sometimes I win in my club side, like when we played against Galatasaray. Apparently, some people um, bet that we're not going to score. And I scored a goal. Instead of Nigerians to celebrate with me, they come to insult me on my social media for scoring a goal for my team. You know, I think um, the fans, the real fans are back in Nigeria supporting us, praying for us. They feel hot when we lose. And... They know also that we feel twice as hot because we we are the actors. We play with everything. We want to win. And we get disappointed when we don't. Kenny, there's a fine line between um, constructive criticism and cyberbullying. Um, how, what, how, you, how can you as a player relate to that? And how would you advise players probably who are not as mentally strong to take this? Oh, for me, I would say, um, for, let's say in the past when I was not this much sure to handle criticism, when I go to a tournament or I have a game, I delete my, my social uh, media from my phone. I don't post anything. The only time you see me come back is maybe we win a match and I know that everyone is happy, you know. I'll be like, okay, I'll come back and make a post or something. And I think that's what they should do because you cannot stop it. There are a lot of people who is just angry for, for nothing's sake and they will come at you, you know. And for me, um, this tournament, for me, before this tournament as well, we've been getting criticisms. For example, someone wrote to Ola Aina on the, on the Instagram, I hope you die. You know, it's, they just write whatever. They don't care about the consequences, you know. They don't care about the consequences. And most times I've stopped myself from replying a lot of messages that I'll be like, okay, if I reply like this, one blog will take it. They'll make a big deal out of it. But I think um, we we just have to grow thick skin and hopefully keep winning because when we win, they forget about every other thing. Well, Kenneth, so Nigerians who might not understand the extent of cyberbullying, um, how, how hard or how much do you think is the impact 
of cyberbullying on the confidence of players. Because right from even when I was a younger girl, I used to watch Nigerian Super Eagles. You see, in 2010, it was Sunny Kaita and Ayigbeni that were the victims of or, or bullying or what I say bullying or criticisms, which to some yeah. extent sometimes is reasonable until it gets too extreme. In 2014, we also had Joseph Yobo. In tw the last African, we had Maduka Okoye and Sedik Umar being the um, victims of this situation. But how would you say it really impacts on the confidence of players? No, it's really bad. For example, take Maduka, for example, like it got so bad that he couldn't even honor the, the, the call to the national team. And this is what we do to ourselves. For example, I was speaking to Ola and he made some comments that, you know, I wouldn't say here. But if we lose a player, a player like him, just because of some, some bullying from you know, some fans that are not even important, you know, then it's going to affect us. Imagine Ola Aina, for me, was one of the best players in the tournament. And he made it to the team of the tournament as well. So for having one bad game and you, you kill him, you go to his Instagram DM and insult him, it's really wrong. And it kills the confidence of the players. So what if they don't come, if they if they decide, you know what, it's not worth it. I'm not coming. It's nothing. They're playing for their club side. They earn money in their club side, you know. And I think we should really, really address this. Some, I see comments about people saying they want to regulate um, social media and all that. I wasn't in support of this, but actually what's happening now is really bad it's really bad and some people it's just a small set of people but when they come at you they come at you with with everything you know well okay let's see talking about criticisms but in another on another level we know nigeria the afghan is over now back to club football and also the world cup qualifiers and what do you think are the goals the objective for this campaign yes nigeria's already flying are there plans to solidify their stance on the continent and globally Yes, um, definitely. Uh, it's important now to build on this. I think this is since I joined the national team, it's the first time we're this high um, in the ranking. And uh, it's important that we will play South Africa again, which is a very important game and it would not be an easy game. So we have to keep concentration. We have to work hard and try to win the two games because we definitely need to be in the next World Cup been in the next World Cup and for the coach Jose Pesero who so many criticized before the tournament but ended up taking Nigeria to the first final since 2013 how um how strong do you think is his resolution for Nigeria to get to this World Cup and with the players you guys have or the how the team is um, structured at the moment um I think uh, a lot of um, kudos goes to him because it's not a lot of people who would take you know, what he took and still, you know, stay strong and lead the team. Yes, he has some his own uh, lapses, but he's someone who believes in the team. And before the tournament, he actually called a lot of us personally on meetings to discuss about formation and how we think, what formation we think would be better for us going into this tournament. And he actually changed. It, it's difficult to get a coach to change his his pattern that he believes in. But when it wasn't working, he actually, you know, called us, we spoke about it and we tried it. And, you know, in the tournament, it worked out for us. So it's just now we need to, in the in March, in the friendly games, we now need to practice more on this formation because we never played it. We just used it for the tournament. So there was not enough time to really practice and get used to the formation uh, but I think now, before the qualifiers, we'll, you know, train on this and, and perfect it. Well, looking for the team, Kenneth, I think some of the players who miss out of the AFCON will be back. So Nigeria will have a lot more available options. But Kenneth, you are back in your club. What is the goal? Last year, I saw you score a very fantastic goal for your club. What is the goal? What are we expecting to see for Kenneth in his club? That's Cassie Passa. Uh, for me, it's... Uh... You know, it's it's a club that I'm really proud to to be captain of, and my goal is to try to lead them to their first uh, Europa League or Conference League. 
um, campaign and we're fifth in the table and hopefully we can win two, three more games and, and, and push to third position. Well, Kenneth, before I let you go, um, your career is one that so many young footballers want to emulate, knowing that in 2009, you were in your 17, you got a medal, you've gotten every medal of, of the AFCON, and your longevity is something that so many will also want to emulate because we know that when it comes to Africa, people speculate, when is he going to retire, when is he not going to retire? But for you, what would you say to these players who want to be at the top for a very long time? How do they achieve that? What kind of lifestyle do they um, follow through? Um, for me, I would say, first of all, you don't listen to this social media uh, people who come at you and say, um, it's time for you to retire or something. Yes, there was a time I met someone and I said, uh, he was like, you're Kenneth Omero. I said, yes. He's like, your name is bigger than you. So what does that mean? It means maybe I look smaller than my name and he's been hearing about my name for a long time. You know, I think once you're playing um, regularly for your team, you know you have what it takes to be there and you're ready to give everything. For me, don't listen. Keep uh, to your diet, keep to your training and and stay disciplined. This is this is very important to, to get you to, you know, to play a long time. Well, thank you so much, Kenneth Omero, for joining us on the show. And I'll say a big congratulations to you. And I wish you more luck in more of your games, your tournaments. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.